fantastic talk. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your experiences. Um, you know, I I thought it was fascinating. Uh, you know, just kind of seeing the the different approaches that you could take. I um, you know I'd never heard of Ray before, but it seems like it's uh, kind of a big deal. I read a uh, read about it a bit um, as well, and um, yeah, it seems like it's getting a lot of a lot of adoption. So you know, it's it's, it's interesting. I think for this audience to see how that, you know, how that's happening on Kubernetes and different ways of, of approaching that. Um, so I guess the first question I had kind of coming at it as, um, you know, not really knowing that much about nodeless or Ray or anything is, uh, you know, the way you, you kind of scale up the nodes. It sounds, sounds a lot like just traditional Kubernetes cluster auto scaling, um, you know, so adding and removing nodes based on, you know, based on some kind of metrics. Uh, so what's the difference between what you do with Nodeless and that, that regular Kubernetes auto-scaling? Sure, yeah, I can take this one. Um, so with Cluster Autoscaler, you still have to figure out what is the base instance type of the node pools and how do you, how do you set the scale up knob and how do you set the scale down knobs and these are the decisions you make at cluster creation time and you'll have to continuously monitor your cluster auto scaling knobs to see if the decisions you made six months ago are still the right uh, high watermarks for scaling up and scaling down in case the workload patterns changed um, with nodeless what it does is it takes the abstraction one level above. Uh, so you're not just consuming on-demand instances or spot instances. Nodeless is going to consume the right compute shape, uh, whether it is um, on AWS, it's on-demand spot or Fargate, or if you want to take the abstraction one level above, it can also get you the right a cloud provider to source your compute from based on the application SLAs. So um, let's say your app needs one vCP, one gig of RAM, uh, and your policy is low cost. Maybe today the right shape is Fargate on AWS. And uh, two months later, if you provision your application two months later, the right shape could be a preemptable VM from GCP, for example. So uh, Nodeless basically, it uh, it gets rid of the operational complexity of trying to keep track of what are the hundred kinds of on-demand instances on AWS and how do I stitch together my um, auto scaling groups? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that that's um, it does. I mean, I, if I can summarize that, I'd say you know a smart cost aware auto scaler. Is that right? Policy yeah, policy aware auto scaler where one of the policies could be cost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that that's cool. And and in the work that you did, um, you know, are you were you able to like net down what this translates into in terms of you know cost savings or performance differences between the approaches? Um, and would you want to describe your uh, plans for? Yeah, we haven't run enough experiments to kind of be completely um, to give a crisp answer to that, but we're certainly planning to because we certainly see the promise here. You know, because you know when we were running fixed uh, ray, fixed size ray clusters, you know, we were incurring you know a basic cost you know all the time, and since we were running them manually, we didn't want to manage to try to see if there's spot instances available and these kinds of things. And so when, once we saw the promise of Nodeless being able to spin things up, you know, quickly, uh, very quickly compared to our workloads, for example, um, we, you know, we could see that this will, this will make a huge savings. But yeah, we're planning to run a set of experiments that would compare the cost, because we do know the cost of a fixed size cluster for these workloads, um, compare that with um, the uh uh, Nodeless giving us this dynamic uh, management of the resources. Very cool. Yeah, I suspect you'll come up with some uh, pretty interesting numbers there that will get people. I, I expect it to be substantial, but you know, time will tell. Yeah, yeah. It'll definitely um, be easier operationally because I was the one doing these <laughs> experiments operationally, and I mean, I was 
you know, I didn't want to spend too much money on floating point instances. So I was like, oh, when will this probably be done? You know, and it was just, you know, and I couldn't take up too many resources or nobody else could run anything. It, it, uh, did, it did look like a project where you could accidentally spend an awful lot of money. It, it, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I looked at the, um, the KIP project that Nodeless is, is built on, right? And it, it sounds like it's built around um, virtual, virtual Kubelet. Is, um, so is, is there something like, that you're doing that's, um, I, I guess, that's, that's different from what you would get from deploying virtual Kubelet into a regular Kubernetes cluster? And maybe that's basically the same answer as how is this different from cluster auto scaling, but um, I'm kind of in interested how Q virtual Kubelet fits into to what what you're doing here. Yeah, that's a really good question. So the Kip project that Virtual Kubelet is built upon is uh, is solving is primarily used for cloud bursting from on-premise data centers into public cloud. The Nodeless project that is used for that, the experiments that Anne and Chi did for Ray, that is independent of the KIP project. Um, because uh, some of the things that we get, uh, some of the roadblocks that we encountered with KIP, um, uh, including the virtual kubelet uh, questions that we get in virtual kubelet community is Kubernetes compliance and all of that stuff. So what we, uh, what we realized is the vision is exactly the same as KIP for Nodeless uh, for um, using Nodeless for Ray, but the execution is slightly different path. It is um, built as an independent controller that's running on the Kubernetes control plane instead of a BK um, a product that's deployed underneath the control plane because we want to be able to take the Helm charts for Ray and Ludwig that the community has built as ease and deploy them on the control plane clusters. And with the with the compliance differences between VK and regular Kubernetes, we couldn't do that as ease. Right. Okay. Okay. So virtual in in, in the scenarios you were talking about, virtual cube that wasn't in that picture at all. Is that right? No, no, that's correct. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. Okay. No, that's, that's yeah. great. I was really impressed at w when um, she ran his nodeless technology and it just worked right out of the box on a, you know, a Kubernetes cluster that was set up um, in, in Oracle, you know, without any special purpose um, installation. So I don't, gee, I don't know if you want to comment on that, but it was, it was magical. Yeah. So the, um, I guess some of the challenges we like run into in Cape, we're trying to like solve it uh, in this new version of uh, uh, knowledge technology. Um, and think, I think one of the biggest uh, goal is uh, try to be um, Kubernetes compliant and uh, work with um, like uh, the standard uh, Kubernetes out of the box and work with, you know, the popular vendors like um, uh, Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft. Yeah, well, it, it certainly seems like you achieved that. So, you know, fantastic job. And, you know, I, I guess kind of my last question, what, what's next? What's next on your uh, roadmap or things you'd like to go knock down, um, you know, look, looking into the future? What would you like to, what would you like to try next? What are we going to hear about the next rejects? Ah, that's a really good question. So we would like to complete the experiments that Anne and uh, Chi are working on for the uh, for the Ray platform, and we want to uh, uh, we want to run experiments with GPU devices, and we want to be able to benchmark the experiment results across multiple cloud vendors. And uh, we'd love to publish this as a blog post on CNCF and also one of the cloud providers to come up with the complete results of the experiment experiments across multiple cloud vendors. And like you asked about earlier in the Q&A, um, benchmark the costs and um, the application performance with and without GPU devices. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing you in Valencia at the, <laughs> at the next rejects and uh, chatting about how it's all gone then. And um, thank you so much for joining us and for the wonderful presentation. 
thanks so much for giving us the opportunity. Uh, Chi Ann and I really appreciate it. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.